Hi, it's Marie-Louise here, the Danish painter, and welcome to my channel where I help landscape painters loosen up their painting style and paint with more confidence. In today's video, I have something special for you. I wanted to uh, show you my process when I do my preliminary sketches and, and work for larger paintings. So I thought what better way than to show you from beginning to end everything in real time along with my commentary and my thoughts for the process uh, as it's unfolding. The sky area is thoroughly dry now and uh, so is the foreground. So I'm just going to assess the painting and look at my reference photo and see um, kind of remind myself of where I was going with the painting in the first place. I like how the brown color is showing through the green underneath the green over here and um, I'm pretty pleased with the colors. These kind of expressive marks here uh, from the tire marks. I, I like those as well. The sky and the clouds are, I'm not happy with those um, at all. So I'm gonna work on that now um, and improve. Um, maybe I will uh, just not look so closely to my reference photo because that cloud uh, on the reference photo, uh, I don't know, I keep making it, I keep doing it. so. I want to forget about it. Maybe I should just stop looking at the reference photo and uh, look at some of my other sketches with uh, great clouds on it. But nonetheless, I want to do something about the sky and I want to finish up um, the details here on the horizon along with my focal point. Once again, I'll get up my big old brush here and um, I think the plan here is to add some more clouds or cloud colors up here and um, I'll probably make some marks into the paint um, as well. But I want to expand a bit on the different color tones in the sky up here. So I will mix up a, um, a warm tone probably some burnt sienna um, or actually some white with a little bit of burnt sienna in it just so that it's a white color but it has the warmth of the burnt sienna. I want to get rid of this blob up here. Maybe expand a bit on these clouds. I still want to keep it um, quite expressive, so I'm sticking to the big brush and uh, adding some shapes. When you paint clouds you often want to have different sizes of clouds. If they're all tiny clouds the same size it will look unnatural. Um, it's also a good idea to let the clouds kind of go out um, above the edges so that you, you only see part of the cloud and not the whole shape of the cloud. If they're kind of going beyond beyond the the edges of your painting, the landscape will feel larger and um, it will just help the painting look more more natural. So probably add a bit more up here. 
like this. I'm not sure I want the, uh, to make um, these very um, clear clouds uh, that I had in my reference photo. I actually, I like that it's kind of a simple uh, landscape here. So I don't want too much information in my painting. I wanted the blue sky, the clouds, and I wanted these tire tracks and my focal point. So, um, actually, let me work on the, these uh, trees and bushes and uh, see how I like it. I mixed up kind of a dark green here. And you can see, again, I'm using a fairly large brush. Um, if you like to paint looser, don't be tempted to take a, a tiny brush like this. Uh, go big. And um, a way to control your paint is to uh, not have too much paint on the brush. You can see that it's, uh, it has paint on it, but um, not a whole lot of paint. You can always have a piece of paper next to you and just, um, you see here, you can dab on that piece of paper to see if it... Um, how wet your paint is. So it's not too wet and uh, I like that it makes these streaks. This is going to be perfect for uh, making my trees. So I will move my brush in different, I'm kind of dabbing it down also. can't really, I'm not going to follow the two rounded lines that I had there. You could, but I like, this kind of makes it look like the forest is made up of trees of different heights and sizes. So, yeah. Remember, this is just um, some kind of working sketches to um, give me some materials to work on when I need to paint larger paintings. And also to practice the colors I see. The painting is dry and um, I do want to improve a bit on the cloud area up here in the clouds. The, um, they could use a bit of work. So what I want to do is mix up a uh, titanium white, uh, a bit of a thicker color. I'm not going to add water to it. And uh, I think I will use my painting knife to apply the paint and then probably make these marks into the paint. At least that's the plan. Um, Another tip I wanted to show you is um, when you mix paint. I have been mixing on different surfaces for many years. Now I uh, switched mostly to using these plastic lids. Um, these are um, recycled lids from uh, larger paint buckets and buckets of gesso that I receive. But I can also buy these from the paint store. They sell them just uh, loose as is, um, very cheap. So if you're looking for a surface to mix your paint on, um, this is quite nice. Plus when your paint dries, you can just take your painting knife and then scrape it off uh, like this and peel it off and uh, throw this in the trash. Um, that way you won't be getting any paint uh, down your drain. So anyway, I just wanted to include that little tip as well. So I'm going to mix the paint up on the lid. This is a bit of burnt sienna. I 
I like this. Yeah, it's pretty good. Good. So I'm going to load up my painting knife and add it on, kind of dragging it down. Of course, now I'm getting some kind of unnatural edges here. This doesn't look natural at all. So I will go in either with a brush, you can use a brush to soften up the edges, or you can use some, some paper towel to kind of soften the edges and make them more cloud-like. Also, I do want to include a bit of these squiggly marks here, actually. Maybe I'll use the brush. I like these. If you don't like them, you don't include them in your painting, of course. See, a lot of times I will draw the the marks in and I'll paint over it and you can do this for a while until you get some marks that you like. Not too long, obviously, because the paint will dry, but On the reference photos, there were these uh, windmills over here and I think some some small buildings. You could choose to include those. Um, in your painting. I don't want too much detail in here and I do feel they might add um, a bit too much detail, but it could be a uh, could be a nice addition. To, um, to the painting also. But for this one, I'll keep the windmills out. And um, I think I'll just peel off the tape now while the paint is still wet. And so we can have a look. Yeah, I pretty much like this. It has that feeling of early spring. So um, I'll let it dry completely and uh, I'll do another sketch. So um, anyway, I hope this uh, demonstration has been helpful. As you can hear, there are a bunch of thoughts going through uh, my head as I'm painting. Uh, and I'm sure um, you are the same way with all sorts of um, questions and possible solutions and how to mix the color, how to add the color. The... There are so many things to consider when painting. So, um, and this never stops uh, regardless of how much um, experience uh, you get as an artist but um, I hope this uh, was useful to you and uh, let me know in the comments if you like um, do you paint landscapes and how does your local landscape look I have no mountains uh, in my country uh, in Denmark so I would love to paint some mountains. Anyway, thank you for uh, watching and see you in the next video.